Hello and welcome to Talk Money, where we talk about uh, your mutual funds now over the next uh, half an hour. Heman Rustagi joins us to answer your questions. And the first caller of the day is Vikas Hajela from uh, Noida. Hi, Vikas. Good morning. Yeah, hi. Hi. Yes, tell us. What's your question? Uh, okay, my, my query is like uh, I purchased uh, Reliance ULIP uh, around uh, uh, five years back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I made some investment on that. So nice. I just want to know, I mean, the value of that uh, ULIP uh, had gone up, uh, you know, in the past, mm -hmm. few, uh, few months back. But now, again, you know, it has come quite down. So I just want to know, is it the right time? I should, you know, dispose that? Because I, I have already completed three years of investment. Okay, because uh, I will hand it over to Heman, but I must tell you one thing, that when you buy a ULIP, you buy it for 12 to 15 years. You don't buy it for five years or three years. And the reason you're seeing a fall is because in the first one or two years, a lot of your charges are all deducted, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the way a ULIP is structured as a product. So if you don't stay till 12 or 15 years, you're going to suffer. So okay. you bought this with a specific purpose, I'm presuming, which was to create wealth for yourself in 12 to 15 years. You've got to just stay on with that kind of a timeline. You can't look at it as a three-year. Three-year is just an option in case you want to get out. There is a lock-in period, which is now five years. You probably bought it at a time when it was three years, yeah. all right? So yeah. you've obviously bought a ULIP, which is not like a stock or not like a mutual fund, which you can get out of in three years or four years. Stay okay. on, okay? But let Heman guide you through better. Heman. Yeah, Vivek, I entirely agree with you. I think any investment in ULIP has to be for a period of at least 10 years or more. And as you rightly mentioned, because in the initial years, your ch charges are so high that you see more impact. Plus, the markets have not been actually doing uh, that well. Uh, you know, that's why Vikas, I think it's very important that before we do any investment or buy any investment insurance policy, I think one has to really spend time on, on thinking whether this is the right option for me. Uh, but having made that selection uh, just for three years, I, I don't think that's the right uh, time frame to actually exit from this. Uh, today the markets are down, so obviously the, the value of the ULIP also is, is down today. But if you keep it, hold it for another uh, six, seven years, I'm sure you will get uh, uh, good results from this. But in future, uh, make sure that you, you spend time in you know, deciding whether this is the right option for you or not. And also make sure that when you're looking at a ULIP or any other traditional policy, it doesn't give you the right kind of uh, you know, adequate exposure uh, or risk cover. Uh, so I think uh, look at a term policy if you don't have one so that you are uh, fully protected. Right. Uh, next up, Vikrant uh, Kurgi calls in from Bangalore. Hi, Vikrant. Uh, how can we help you? Uh, well, uh, good morning and I wish you a very happy new year. Same to you, Vikrant. Uh, well, I've got a very simple question. I'm a beginner and I just want to know that uh, name of five funds in which I could invest 3,000 rupees every month for the next five, 10 or 15 years. Okay. Uh, Vikrant, do you have any other investments, any other sort of financial planning or this is the very first time you're going to get started? Uh, well, I'm studying very late. I'm 33. The only thing that I have is basically an RD with a couple of banks. Right. Uh, but uh, for the first time, I'm stepping into equity market. Well, it's never too late, I guess. Uh, better late than never, right? Uh, Hemant, uh, five funds that uh, Vikrant can look at investing for 3,000 rupees for the next 10 to 15 years. What would be your top picks? Vikrant, uh, I would say that, you know, before we talk about investment options for you, I think it's very important before you make an investment decision that you should be very sure about your time horizon. You did mention about five years, 10 years, and 15 years. You know, the point is that when you talk about your time horizon, based on that, you decide your asset allocation. Especially if you're investing for, let's say, uh, 15 years, then the focus has to be on asset class, which can help you in beating inflation, which is where, you know, equity comes into play. So if you're talking about a 15-year time horizon, then your focus has to be on equity funds. Remember that when you're investing for the shorter period or a medium term, then the focus has to be more maybe on, on capital protection. But over a 15-year period, it has to be clearly on beating inflation. Uh, I'm not too sure whether for 15,000 uh, you need uh, five funds, but since you've asked for five funds, I'll, I'll tell you five names. Uh, ideally, I would say maybe three or four funds max you should be looking at. Uh, some of the fund that you can consider investing is HDFC Equity, which is a multi-cap fund, HDFC Top 200, essentially investing in large cap, some exposure in mid-cap. ICRC a focus blue chip fund, which invests in uh, uh, pure large cap, but takes a concentrated bet. Then you have IDSC Premier Equity, which is a mid-cap fund, and Reliance Equity Opportunity, which again is a fund which essentially invests in uh, you know, mid-cap and small cap. So these are the five funds that you can consider. But like I said, three or four funds should suffice for you. 
Kran, the ego, three to four funds should be enough. Any more than that would get extremely difficult for you to manage yourself. So diversification, yes, is important, but you could keep that focus uh, between three to four funds. Uh, hopefully that answers your query. We'll slip in a break on that note, but when we come back, uh, we'll continue taking up your mutual fund related queries, so keep it with us. Welcome back. Uh, holding strong the market, 300 points still up on the Sensex. Uh, pretty much been in that range uh, over the past one, one and a half hours. Hemant Pardesi from Hyderabad has this question. Hi, Hemant. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's regarding the mutual funds which I'm holding. Right. Um, that is DSP, BlackRock, small and mid cap fund, mm -hmm. uh, Reliance Equity, and HDFC Equity. Mm -hmm. So I don't do SIPs, but uh, I've done a lump sum purchase as such. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to know that uh, seeing the vol volatility in the market, it goes up and down. Even we hold the mutual funds for a little longer term, I don't see much benefit coming out across. Mm -hmm. So I just want uh, an ex expert advice that uh, what should be the duration from now on if mm -hmm. I have to hold these funds and when should I redeem them? Okay, you wrote in your mail that you want to hold for one and a half years, is that right? That was something uh, was in my mind, mm. but I want an expert advice on that because some people say that's a very short duration. Yes, that's right. It is. What you should be doing is having a much more longer time frame, Hemant, but looking at your schemes every six months to see if there is something very dramatically wrong with that particular scheme vis-a-vis -vis the peer group. Because after all, markets will go up and down. Uh, you know, your NAVs will fall and rise. But unless there is something very dramatically wrong with your specific scheme compared to others, you should not get overly worried and keep looking at it on a daily basis. It's not like a stock. You don't uh, you know, keep tracking it on a daily basis to see whether it's up or down. Anyway, Hemant, uh, do you like these three schemes? Is he okay with it? And perhaps maybe you want to tell him that he should, his future investments, try and do it in SIPs considering the volatility that we live with these days? Yes, I think out of the three funds which are there in the portfolio, uh, DSP Small and Midcap is a good quality fund. SDSC Equity, again, has been doing pretty well. So these two funds... Uh, definitely can be retained in the portfolio. The third fund, Reliance Equity, has not been doing well. Actually, this fund was launched uh, in the first quarter of 2008 when, when the market was at the peak. And, and since inception, this fund hasn't done actually well. So my recommendation would be that you know you should exit from this fund and consider investing, uh, to switch this investment into another fund of uh, you know Reliance Mutual Fund, which is the Reliance Equity uh, Opportunity Fund. So with these three funds, I think uh, his portfolio should be all right. Uh, as far as uh, the time horizon is concerned, you know, generally my view is that one should have minimum time horizon of five to seven years. In fact, when you invest through SIP, it should be even longer because you benefit from averaging and power of compounding uh, the more time that you give your investment to, to actually grow in the market. Uh, second thing is when you're talking about, you know, investing in equity and if you've made one investment and if you don't follow it up, it actually amounts to uh, timing the market at whatever level you may have invested. So I would say that if you can't do SIP, then whenever you have long-term investable surplus, keep adding money to your equity portfolio. Otherwise, like I said, if you make one-off investment and don't follow it up, it becomes basically timing the market. So I think if you follow this process, allow your investments to grow over the next five to seven years, I'm sure you can get good results from your investments. Well, that's the advice coming in. Next up, we've got an email from Dr. Kiran who writes in from Bangalore. She's a doctor. And she says she's invested in UTI Contra Front, about 25,000 was a one-off investment. Now she's shifted to the UTI Energy Fund. And she says there seems to be no gains in the new fund as well. Should I hold this one or change the fund? Um, Hemat, what are you making of uh, Kiran's query? Because she's gone after a sectoral fund, a sector that has been a relative underperformer recently. I'm not sure what's driven her to switch over to a sectoral fund, but what's your advice? Well, I would say that I think she did the right thing by exiting from uh, UTI Contra Fund because the fund has not been doing well. Even now, when we look at the performance, it has hugely underperformed the peer group. So she did the right thing by exiting from there. But investing that money into, again, a uh, sector and thematic fund is obviously not, not a great idea. You know, when you're trying to build up your corpus through smaller contribution through SIP, I think uh, I've always maintained that one should avoid investing in sector or thematic funds. The focus should be on... Uh, plain diversified fund. 
uh, what I would recommend is actually to make maybe another change actually at, at this stage by moving this money into UTI Opportunity Fund. This fund has been actually one of the best performing funds from UTI. And in fact, even when you compare its performance with the peer group, it's done pretty well. So my suggestion is to move this money into UTI Opportunity and then allow this money to stay there for at least three to five years. Well, look at a UTI Opportunity Fund because that's actually been a good sort of fund coming in from this house. Uh, we'll take a break on that note, but we'll continue taking up your fund-related queries, so keep it with us. Market remains strong, 310 points up on the Sensex now, 47.28. That's what we are at as far as the Nifty is concerned. Uh, Surinder Mohan Gandotra from uh, Jammu calling in. Uh, hi, Mr. Gandotra. Good morning. Hi. Are you fine, sir? How are you? Fine, sir. You'll have to put your TV on mute so you can oh, hear me better. Oh, I am not getting that. How are you? Shall Yes. Mr. Gandotra? All right. Okay. I seem to have lost him, but uh, Hemant, uh, he's calling in from Jammu. He's 70 years old and he's invested 10 lakh rupees in mutual funds. But uh, as I sent you the list, look at that. 11 schemes is what he's sitting on, all one time, lump sum. Would you like to quickly tell him what he needs to do? Well, definitely. I think uh, first is uh, uh, reduce the number of funds. Uh, because 11 funds are uh, too many. Uh, secondly, considering his age, I think he should be essentially focusing on the fund which invests predominantly in the large cap. He should ignore uh, you know, investing in uh, funds which are thematic, sectoral, or have aggressive investment uh, philosophy. So I think out of the, out of the existing uh, uh, portfolio, a few funds that I would recommend exiting is Bidla Top 100, Bidla Infra, Reliance Diversified Power, and HDFC Core Satellite can be switched into uh, HDIC equity. I would say that you know he can allocate more money into two funds which are existing in the portfolio. One is HDFC uh, equity and HDFC top 200. And also uh, maybe include, uh, by exiting from four or five funds, maybe include one or two funds like uh, Fidelity equity. So with five or six funds, I think uh, his portfolio should be all right. Right. That's the advice, Mr. Mohan. If you're hearing us, uh, you've got to sort of lower the number of funds that you're invested in. Next up, uh, we get an email from Mishtaq Ahmad who writes in from Bangalore. He wants to invest about 25,000 rupees per month and Hemanthi wants you to advise him on what the best funds are and how he should be sort of uh, allocating his 25,000 rupees per month across various funds. Well, I think considering the time horizon of uh, six years, which means that if he's investing through SIP, his average holding period is going to be around uh, three years. So I would uh, recommend that first, poss if possible, extend that time horizon. Uh, secondly, then uh, if it cannot be done, then uh, you know, a part of money has to go into equity-oriented balance fund. So you can look at a combination of three or four funds, uh, but essentially diversified funds, especially like I said, uh, investing in predominantly in large cap. So maybe he can look at HDFC Prudence. He can invest around 7,000 there. ICRC Focus Blue Chip. He can invest uh, 6,000. HDFC Top 200. He can look at. Uh, uh, 6,000 or DSP 100, one of these uh, he can look at, and then Fidelity Equity, again 6,000. So with this, he can invest in four funds, 25,000 rupees. But like I said, if possible, he should try and extend the time horizon to get best results from these funds. All right, here's an email from Shaheen Kesuri. He wishes to invest in a combo plan by LIC, which is uh, a Jeevan Saral, and he wants to take an HDFC top 200, can invest 3,000 per month. The agent says, according to him, that the returns after 35 years will be nearly 80 lakh rupees is what he'll get. He can hold for 35 years, and he wants to know if he should go in for this combo plan. Hemant. Well, I think for a time horizon of 35 years, I don't think uh, this is uh, the right combination. Uh, you know, uh, one is endowment plan. The second one, SDFC Top 200, is uh, uh, an equity open-ended fund. You know, when you're investing for 35 years, Shaheen, I would say that, you know, your focus has to be on, like I said earlier, beating inflation. Inflation is the bigger risk and not capital uh, risk. Uh, if you invest this money in, let's say, in two equity funds, because when you invest for 35 years, uh, believe me, you can get fantastic results. I mean, even if I take an av uh, annualized average return of 15%, you can actually build a corpus of 
3.42 crores over 35 years. So you can see the difference here. And you're not taking too much of risk. Yes, investing 100% money into equity can be risky. But like I said earlier, when you're investing for 35 years, uh, I don't think there is any risk to capital at all. So I think the ideal combination would be invest in two funds, maybe HDFC Top 200 and ICICA Focus. These are both predominantly investing in large cap stocks. Continue this process for 35 years and you can build a huge corpus from this investment. Thanks, Atan Heyman, for that. And of course, wish you a happy new year and we hopefully see you next week. Uh, in the meantime, the markets have added on those gains 2% on the Nifty, so 47.27 is what we're trading at. It's looking good. Remember, global queues were quite supportive, so across Asia as well, you did see a strong rally. Economic data in terms of the India PMI is pretty much uh, could possibly be held responsible for a good amount of gain that we're seeing in trade today. Sensex also holding up. Broader markets are gaining in line. The sectoral picture is also looking quite promising, with the metals pack leading the gains up for 3.5%, banking, uh, real estate, consumer goods, capital goods, all those sectors are seeing gains anywhere in the range of 2 to 3% each. In terms of to, uh, top gainers, it's the second day running in coal India, sitting in the top of the pack, up nearly 4.5%. Tata Steel, Tata Motors, both those counters are up 4-odd uh, percent. You've also got banking stocks that are gaining, so the likes of a Kotak Mahindra Bank, ICICI Bank, Axis, SBI, all those banking names are doing quite well in today's trade. Steelite Industries is up quite sharply. You've also got JP. L&T is now back around those 1,035 sort of levels. Whether or not the rally could continue for L&T is anybody's guess, but for now, it's added on about 3-odd percent in today's trade. In terms of losers, BP sell is down about a percent and a half on back of a sharp rally that was seen in crude prices and overnight trade. M&M is selling off slightly, and you've got Sun Farm and Grassum that are also looking a little subdued. So that's the markets. The mid-cap space looking quite promising as well. Uh, the likes of a Suzlon are gaining on back of strong news. Uh, but all in all, it's turning out to be a good morning at least uh, for the markets. Well, that's all the time we have on this edition of Talk Money. Thanks a ton for watching.